our system, how we make our students to feel so that they recover. Second part of this system I am taking is our research part. Our research we are doing, what we found we are initiating this system. Before doing that, I will tell that I have done my master's degree from Hyderabad Medical College, master's from Indian Medical Research Institute, PhD from Indian Medical Research Institute, then I have done a short course from Peking uh, University of Australia for a very short course. I have been a uh, dean at Medical College for about five years. I am a professor since 19, 2005. I have been control examination for uh, five four years before the that we have started our entrance examination I from 2013 I was part of that and I was control as a five four five years. Now since last two years I am working as a research So I will touch in what section next. Kind of, kind of. See this is our uh, the fact. The, this is our agricultural university which has been ranked with the sixth best agricultural university all over. Sorry, sorry. We only three words here because this is our viewers. Here, uh, we are sixth best, best agricultural, we are banned excellence uh, in our uh, annual ranking also. This is not from something one day. We have started this university has started from 1984. The all works carried by the teachers and students is the result of this. We are six plus agricultural Next. What is this agriculture reform? That's what we are doing, how we are doing. Next. Best thing for all agricultural farmers is to evaluate the quality agricultural system. The quality evaluation includes, you are all aware, the secrecy, the time bounds, the transparency, and these all things come when you have competent and competent reform. These are very critical parts of all examination system. Security, time moundness, transparency, then competence and competence. These evaluation systems should always be, this should address the core issues, not only the, what you mark up and give, personality also has to be touched in the examination system. Evaluation, the knowledge, comprehensiveness, and not only the memory. We have to evaluate the comprehensive evaluation of the problems, then they possess the competence of continuity. For all these, our quality questions, know your profession. First and foremost, you can know what you are. You can evaluate then only when you know what you are. Know your subject. A teacher should know what subject I am teaching. And this is my life and what I have to do. Know your target, which I am teaching, which I am evaluating. It's not that I have, I have to categorize the undergraduate students, separate a postgraduate student, separate a PhD student. It should not be that as a teacher, I will set up an undergraduate student, such a paper which will bombard the field. We have to know the target of that is very, very critical when setting a person. Then know your service. These are the things critically when you have to go for the uh, yeah, reforms in the education system. Next. What is a teacher in a university system? A teacher is someone who helps to learn something. A professor is post secondary academic instructor. He has an academic instructor, he is now a secondary academic instructor. The highest level educator, usually specialized in a specific academic. Subjects of field conduct research beside teaching. Because in our system, we have to conduct a teacher in agricultural university has a three dimensional activity. He has not only teach, he has compulsory conduct research. Not only postgraduate research, his own research is a part of his life. Otherwise, he will not get evaluated in next Then, next part is we have to reach the farmers. That's our extension of system for Next. So, the major roles of impact subject specific teaching is set a course set like when we have a teacher in our subjects, he has in the first class set his course out. That's the important for us in our agriculture. He has 
maybe a broader counselor, but in the first class, he has to say what are the classes are, the outline of the courses, what I will be teaching in the semester, how I will be teaching that. Try to restrict the schedule of course time because we have a very, very critical time. You cannot, we say 110 days, you cannot go 111 days. You have to restrict it 110 days. It cannot go 111 days. You have to adjust it. You have to, it's a very quality uh, timeline evaluation system. And that's why in agricultural system, never a degree program is postponed. Even though the pandemic, whatever happened in uh, these, these days, not a single degree program was postponed by one month. That is the system we have in Africa. At the end of the classwork, he has to wrap the lecture. That's very essential. Whatever he has done, he should give you a back, brief wrap to what I have taught, so that the student gets activated. Because all the students in the class are of two types. One, who is learning, who is listening, other, who is learning, who is just watching. The students are always two types. One who is just watching. That means he is, he is listening somewhere, he is there. Other who is learn, learning. That means he is basically in the head. So as then we wrap up, the one who is even watching, he gets activated what I have been, what I do. Somewhere he gets activated what I am getting. At the beginning of next class, it is very essential for us to wrap what we have done next class. To just give him a background so that I this is the best quality to good teacher to work. Next. This rule of our teachers is always protected. Set up for self papers, evaluate the answer groups, evaluation of the students' subject specific characters. Because we have a very essential point of practice. In our system, not the is not more than 60 percent. We have a percent to have in each group practice. And practical exams are evaluated separately. It is very essential for a student to pass practical as well as here. He cannot pass one on. It is very essential. Both are to be completely passed. That to give a practical knowledge. Next. So paper setting, we have two types of papers. Always we are having both object and subject. We don't have a single subject type paper. We have very compulsory that 30 to 40 percent part of the budget paper should be object. Coding, this is the examination. Let me just try a Coding, decoding and evaluation the all. These are the some of the rules of our business. Next. So, what type of exams we have? In our internal system, we have the submission system, as well as annual also. Annual is restricted to the exams. They have annual exams. That's the technical of all the exams we have to the exams. We have assignments in the exam. We have midterm examinations. Then, end term examinations and practicals. 95 instructor days with additional 50 days of examination are possible. It's very essential that a teacher conducts 95 days of teaching classes for a service. Even if he has to take some time, two classes if he is in a big week, but he has to practically conduct these things. Next. The course can, one course, we have a credit system. Because now uh, in the traditional system, also credit system are common. Uh, one course, credit is defined here in one hour lecture and a three hours of that and unless there are at least 16 contact hours for theory and 32 contact uh, hours for practical tutorial work per credit per semester course will not be done. Okay. Next. We have another part that is not your usual We have in our all courses that essentially one year in the last year rural agriculture around it. For veterinary sciences, one year introduction is compulsory, that is they have to go for hospitals, district hospitals to conduct with this practical knowledge, same in agriculture, horticulture, agriculture, fishery, they have to conduct this program for that one semester equivalent, uh, that is two parts, one is a road, a railway and another is field training program. This is a one semester program. Next. This is our normal semester examination, how we can have a mid-term and uh, end-term and end-term because we have external examinations and all sorts of things about our uh, system. Next. This is 
is how we evaluate those courses or uh, for post graduate courses. Because for post graduate also we have to evaluate students based on the course. Next. Academic regulation for masters, we have now we have 35 courses. This is different what you have in your uh, video program. We have synopsis, field work, thesis evaluation and part of the course is one year in each course they have to conduct a research for. This is company doing the other degrees, they have just masters, just with report, but we are in agriculture system one year research work is a composing part. Program that we make the student at the end of postgraduate level and they will learn how to conduct a research. Next, we have to conduct a comprehensive examination of the uh, student, what all he has done, that examination will be evaluated. This is our coursework, PhD also. In PhD also, now in other things also, but in other programs now we have. 30 to 50 credit hours, but we have compulsory 25, sometimes we go up to 45 credit hours for uh, synopsis. Two years research program will be paid in one for our students. Next. This is uh, prelim exemption, how it should be evaluated, how it should be conducted. Second comprehensive system we have in our agriculture. Uh, in the agriculture system. We have compulsory pass, this compulsory student fails. And then comprehensive way is not allowed to submit to you. He has to repeat. If he repeats, fails twice, then the degree is gone. That very critical uh, uh, will be evaluated. We cannot allow, if a student fails twice, uh, uh, comprehensive, he has to say, by the way, you are not in the way. That is an inherent system we have adapted and we are following. Yes. Next. That is the uh, Then sometimes we conduct makeup examinations and supplementary examinations also. Next. So, based on these things, our the, the, uh, agriculture graduates have these attributes. This is based on the, how we evaluate, how we teach the students, and this is the attributes we want our students. He is a model to create. He should have competence. He comes with the competence of common subject, position skills, because he is given one year in an undergraduate program of the time. Then, for this leadership attributes, truly global. Now, we have defined our new, that this is not 2020, do we want our graduates? He should be a critical and reactive thinker, effective communicator. We are, this is our one, new agricultural setup. We are, based on 20, modern 2020, 2020, we are making this. IT skill, innovator, failure, global citizen, socially, culturally, and guided by strong ethical values. Next. This is our new vision of agriculture based on our agricultural ecosystem. And we can that our model of agriculture policy has been adopted by the National Agricultural Policy and ICR has adopted our model. Our honorable president was asked to present the model and all agricultural universities are adopting this model now all over India. This is set up by this policy. Back, back, just back. These are, we have already said, decide to leave. So, in answer to normal courses, now we are asking during our internship and students to take some sticky oriented courses and students that you have. So that he becomes the entrepreneur at the end of the uh, degree program and he must become a well-taker as a thinker, a good student overall. Now, coming to the research form, next. See, as I told that our scientists, our teachers, we call our scientists, our teacher as a the assistant professor from junior scientist. We call our senior scientist come associate professor, professor come teacher. So a teacher here he has compulsory conduct the research part. Next. So in research part, it is very mandatory since we are making them during our study also understand what research is. How to conduct research. It is very essential for a, for a scientist, for a uh, professor to have at least our own one or two research uh, projects. And now we are making them that they should have at least one external one. And a professor and a student should have.
submitted are more than that. Submit, we have, if you give the submits, uh, we have uh, so many submits are that more than uh, uh, total budget outlay is around uh, 400 crores we have for extra money. Properly, the restrictions will come, and we are we are already developing within our capacity. 
pay my own regards to all the teachers and the professors who have devoted their lifetime to learning and to upliftment of our generation and society. So thank you very much to each one of you, sir. Right, I would just like to tell you, you know, a soldier's life, uh, there is a quote in sense that nobody can understand, but I will just uh, relate it. It says, Kaak Chesha Bhako Dhyana Swan Nidra Tathevcha Al Pahari Grah Dhyagi Vidyarthi Na Panch Lachna. So Kaak Chesha is persuasive like a crow. Bhako Dhyana, concentration like a crane. Swan Nidra, light sweeper like a dog. Al Pahari, light eater. Grah Dhyagi is somebody who can give up all the material benefits of life. These are the five essential grades for students and they are also the five essential grades for soldiers. So, it continues to be a process of learning for us. Well, uh, one form of learning of course is to attend the schools, high schools, colleges, universities and achieve. And second form of learning, as they say, is traveling. That fucking to have a few in the comic, you don't have because they learn their life form education was traveling and that is one experience which is also an essential part of our education. So when well, just to be that, I have uh, three masters, I have done some programs at the Indian Institute of Management at Indore and also in the Institute of Information Sciences. Uh, I have, longest I have lived in my life is three years at the National Defense Academy in Pune. Other than that, four years and about three months in South Korea. So I have been to every state, every unique territory of India and about 75 countries in my life and life. And the four years that I was in South Korea, apart from military matters, I was also dealing with business, culture, education and media. And I had the unique opportunity of reaching out to the Korean universities and their high schools for kind of the partnership with their counterparts in India. Before this appointment that I have been here for 10 months, I was working in Delhi and that is the time the new education policy was announced in 2020. As profound is the impact on each of these academic institutes, similar is the impact on the military, you know, right from the soldier to the officers. Every qualification, every age, every selection criteria is going to be affected or is already getting affected by the new education policy. Because what we get in the army are from the same society, what we get in the military, they are graduates, high school graduates, they are college graduates, they are technical graduates, they are professional graduates. So it is fundamentally impacting and for two years we had a series of uh, brainstorming sessions as to how is it going to impact. So I cannot compete with the subject matter experts, they have spoken on their uh, respective topics. But what I would just uh, maybe like to tell you that Like they said, that right from the time the education policy was announced in, I think, 1986, it was modified in 1992, and this was then announced in July 2020. So, you know, change is such a difficult thing, but change is the only eternal. So, for most of us, it is human nature to be status quo. And mostly in common organizations like military organizations, where we wear a uniform, we are the most resistant to change. The whole world is changing. Firstly, the whole world is one village. What has made it happen is technology. The rate of change of technology is so fast that today sitting here in Paramula or Uri or in Spit, I can connect with any part of the world. Not only planet Earth, you can connect with the moon, you can connect with the people who are outside the solar system. So that is the reach that has given. And if you don't recognize the change, we will be suffering. We are already lagging behind. It is time we identify it and learn how to incorporate change in our basic lives. I think what is the endeavor, I will not go into the salient aspects and other of the national education policy, but what is it endeavoring? I think first and foremost in our country, I, as I said, I have studied for two, three, three schools, I studied in eight different schools in my lifetime before I joined the academy. I have got my three masters from three different academies or three different universities. So you find there is a different format, there is a different assessment pattern, there is a different orientation, there is a different approach. At the national level in the school curriculum, we have the Central Board of Secondary Education. We have the Indian Council, ICSC Board. At the state level, every state has its own board, which has their own orientation, their own second languages, third languages. So, if I was in Bengal, third, fourth, I have to study in all the third languages. When I came to Jammu and Kashmir, it was really different. So, I think, first and foremost, what this endeavors, if we do it right, it endeavors to make it uniform. Secondly, there was no disparity between when we have our system of 10 plus 2 plus 3 with 
the global practices, if you go to the global institutes, all these important universities, you found they have a very different system of credit, a very different system of income, qualification and assessment. So there, despite the support and education, our students were moving out. So I think first and foremost, it gets consistency, uniformity at national level, it gets us in sync with the global norm. Now the point is, each one, like Professor Saab was saying, the university has been ranked six all India. Now in the ranking, there are these parameters. We may have very good quality of education here, but when it comes to the indexing in performance parameters, there are no specific benchmarks of the faculty to student ratio, the infrastructure, the research papers published, and research done. So on those parameters, we were never conscious of that. So despite having great potential and good caliber, we found that on the international ranking, our academic institutes were not reaching there. So I think this is another step towards that. Next is what it encourages creativity or innovativeness. We have realized today how important is innovation. People have started with technology in a garage. In one lifetime, 20 years, it has become one of the biggest companies in the world. Today, more than the, I think, the developer of Google is more than the total economy of 80 odd countries in the world. So these companies are so powerful and so rich. They have been starting from a garage based on an idea and most of their owners or the founders are not even high school graduates. So that is the importance of creativity or innovativeness. So I think it induces that. It gives you flexibility when we say multidisciplinary, all-round growth. So it is not just academic like he said that uh, you are you know you want to cram up or mug up your syllabus and do it. So it teaches you to be involved, it teaches you to be employable. We have in this country more than I think 200 million plus graduates, post-graduates and every third student person that I find is a post-graduate or even the most of PhD, but how much is it translating in employability? That is a big gap. I think that is one aspect that it is trying to bridge. The most important part is that I told you about technology and second is the human potential. So in our country, we have almost one-sixth of the world's population. What happened in this country has a huge impact on the global day. So it aims to harness both the optimal levels of technology with the potentials of human beings. And I think on both fronts we are right. Ideally poised at this stage in our economic growth, in our aspirations as a country, in our maturity as a nation, that we can get the right levels of technology in all the domains. We have a human capital. If we can bring this, get them together, use it, to the variety of means in various domains, I think we would achieve all of those so-called sustainable development goals in which out of 17 goals is the fourth goal for education and it's one vital message. So I think National, New York, uh, National Education Policy 2020 aims for that. There are huge challenges in trying to change from what was the set format for the pattern. But in all these challenges also lie in opportunities and this is the time we all need to reflect on our own self as individuals, as institutions, as organizations and see that how do we come at all and make the system uniform and consistent with global practices. So I am very happy and I thank the college for organizing uh, this particular seminar on a uh, very coordinated and interesting subject like this. The subject matter experts have shared over last two days and I am sure all of us have benefited Whatever I know of that uh, one nature, I come from my agricultural family. I have farming land. I come from Jabalpur, which has also got an agricultural university and a veterinary university. And I have got all the for teaching these. So it's a dream to meet each one of you. And I wish the event and the college and each one of you all the very best. Thank you.
and 
the organizing committee is signed on the deliberation and the days of this constituent to follow of this conference to follow the new higher Thank you. Lot of hard work, lot of sincere. 
sincere efforts, not that blood and sweat has gone in vain to achieve this autonomy. It would be appropriate to go back, to go down our memory lands and at least pay some sort of homage to those who have brought us here. Those people who have remained associated with this institution as faculty members, as students, I salute all of them. Just, I would like to share a few things with you in order to make our students realize how important your institution is. Yesterday in the evening I was interacting with some of my friends who have been alumni of this institution in order to prepare myself for this brief interaction with you. One of my friends who is a famous mathematician, not only of our country, but who has a global standing. While I was interacting with him, he is alumni of this college. And resident of adjoining area, which used, which will be used to call it catchment area of this college. When I was interacting with him last evening, he said that when I saw admission in this college, for about 10 days, he attended classes in two institutions, Robert Pini College Soto and Robert Pini College Parabola. He did struggle. Say, ultimately, a in Baha class leta tha, a in Yaha class leta tha. Because that, that college too had a good step. And ultimately, he made his decision to come to Robert Pini College Parabola. So you can realize, these are indicators of the hard work those of the right of our predecessors have put in. Another of my friend who is right now in the audience, Dr. Kesha, he narrated something more important and more fiercely. Back in the 90s, you can realize what was the situation of our institutions in the early 90s, where all the girls of the day, Bali, they used to give 100% results. Pili College Baramula was the only college in whole Kashmir Valley that gave result just 11%. I salute that faculty, I salute this society, I salute those students, not 11% students who qualified examination. I salute 89% of the students who opted to get failed in that examination. It's because of that. This institution is being held in high subjects on this school to insert the university thing. I would like to quote some, I would like to play this and name some of the faculty who have remained associated with this. Shayad, who may say, could show this dunya mein more than you know. I would like to quote the name of Professor Shabba Sahib of chemistry. Of course, each and every person who has remained associated with this institution, Kisi, Jan Se Jai, Kisi Ka Zyada Ho, Kisi Ka Tamu, all of them have contributed significantly. And then, one of the highly respected figures in our academic circles, Professor Chur, he has been probably faculty member of this institution as well as a principal also. No, he's not, he's not he has been on the uh, faculty member here. Professor Dean Punta of Maths. These, these are some of the names which I picked up since yesterday while preparing myself to uh, be here. Then coming towards this autonomy of the institution that has been granted to us. Autonomy doesn't mean only freedom. Autonomy means more responsibilities. More responsibilities for this faculty, more responsibilities for this society, and above all, more responsibilities for our young scholars, for our, for our students. Developing the first thing, developing a sort of emotional bond with this institution. That's very important. If I advise you to 
be deeply interested in your academics, in your course curriculum, but you have to develop autonomy, but the you have to develop and emotional, emotional education, emotional growth in this institution. I was once in fact in with one of the alumni of my alma mater, Punjab Institute University of Indiana, where provided by masters. And he once told me, Kaurav Pasudi, I don't want to enter this gate of this university with shoes in my feet. I would now enter to this gate bare I mean, this used to be the level of emotional attention with the institution. So, what I need to say, Autonomy means the first thing which should come into our mind as autonomous, uh, autonomy means more responsibility for all of us. Many guidelines which have been given by the University Grants Commission, State Government and University, guidelines are well defined and then how to translate those guidelines into actions that all of us have to work out together how to translate those things into actions. As I mentioned somewhere in the guideline I was uh, going through, it's a symbiotic relationship between this college, between the university, between the state government. Of course, it has a symbiotic relationship. But as far as I have understood the symbiotic relationship, all the partners, they get benefit. But here I feel that this type of relationship, it should, it should synergize the activities of this institution. So the relationship has to be of that type. Of course the students, the society, definitely are, but the relationship should be such that activities of this college, they, or each and every act of ours, it should synergize the activities of the institution. I would like to come to the role that the university is going to play in autonomy of these institutions. I will be honest and honestly I will be making some admissions. The role which universities have to play in these autonomous institutions. We have already one autonomous institution, that's uh, Islamia College. Of course we have already started in just they are uh, uh, developing the model, what should be the relationship between the university and this autonomous institution. Yes, you have freedom. But it's clearly mentioned there in the guidelines of the University Grants Commission that university has to help, university has to facilitate the new academic program. You have freedom, freedom to start new academic programs. So we will be more than happy. You are free to tailor your academic uh, post curriculum as per requirements of this region. You are free to tailor that. But once we see the words like help from the university, the university has to facilitate. This means there has to be a sort of hand holding. Let me assure before this learn can it won't be that uh, a sort of, uh, that we won't be releasing the institution from the flux of the uh, university, it won't be like that. Of course, it will be our joint effort to structure your new programs, it will be our joint effort. <laughs> then, many things are very clear. Certificates, University of Kashmir will issue, but definitely clearly can the name of this prestigious college, Government DP College, Paramula. That's, that's there. And then all your these uh, decision making bodies, like right from Board of Studies, Academic Council, Governing Body, the, this will have representation from the university. I would like to assure the faculty of this college that our approach will be, inshallah, will be completely uh, sincere. And we won't, we won't be creating any hurdles for your studies. Uh, of course, we are planning, as is mentioned there in the guidelines also, we will be creating a, an exclusive support system for these 
autonomous college. Of course, we have not been able to develop it to that extent, but we would like to have an exclusive system for support of these autonomous colleges.
दस साल को पंद्रह साल भी बढ़ाया जा सकता है इफ दॉलेज इज नॉट गोइंग इन सर एक्सपेक्टेशन सो लेट्स बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर इन दिस
Thank you very much, sir, for uh, clearing the mist over uh, this thing that we thought that we are free, but we aren't. We told us that, that we will still be with the clutches of the university and we are already under the clutches of the university. But let's go to the clutches of the university. Like those were the good right hands, which you already said, collaborating, coordinating, and uh, something that will add to our uh, freedom to think at least that we can design it very soon. That will add to the future of the university as well. Thank you very much. Now it's the time for the station. I would request the uh, I would invite the audience to the comments to please uh, felicitate the chief here, Professor Carlton and Mukundi, for his presence and for the talk. Thank you. 
Carlos Cantar.
Now, the second item of this cultural program is a Gita presented by the students of this college uh, and the members of the cultural community. So, you can enjoy this Gita now.
तो बैठे रहो यार
Lord.
गाड़ी चलाना है कट मत ले आओ
He protects the Muhammad Baru the Rasul for taking personal interest in mentoring and uh, directing this conference. Uh, thank you, sir, for your encouragement and guidance. We are also thankful to the Secretary Staff Council of the BDC Barakula and HOD Physics, Dr. Tarek Ahmed, sir, for all the support, guidance, and encouragement. We are also grateful to all the participants of this conference, the faculty members and the students who participated with us in this conference. I place on record our gratitude to the members of the teaching faculty of BDC Baragola for their cooperation and support. I also take this opportunity to state you to place on record the contribution of my respected colleagues and organizing secretary of this conference, Dr. Umaira Kadri, HOD Environmental Science. Dr. Okuru Bhatt, HUD Chemistry, and, and uh, the Professor Shakil Ahmed Naja, HUD Computer Sciences, for their effort in making this conference a success. Our special thanks are also due to all the reporters of this conference, the Professor Zahid Hamid, the uh, Ishtar Ahmed Sheikh, Dr. Aapid Rashid Bhula, Dr. and Dr. Mohammed Siddiq Rathar, for patiently reporting and reporting the proceedings of this conference. I would like to thank the conveners and members of the college, the committees of the college, the college advisory committee, the internal college cell, cell, hospitality and protocol committee, the college media cell, the college cultural committee, associate NCC officer, the lieutenant Dr. Tamil Ahmed Bhabat, NSF, the program officer, all of whom were instrumental in organizing and coordination of this conference. The, the last but not the least, I wish to extend a thanks to the non-TV staff Especially Mr. Afa Khale from India, his study is the special mentor there. And Mr. Yitzhak Zaheem from the principal's office, he is the special mentor as well, for managing the, uh, the proceedings of the, and, and the technicality of this conference. We are also thankful to all the student volunteers from the Department of Media Studies, from the Department of Computer Science, NSS, NCC volunteers and the students who were part of the cultural committee who had enthusiastically contributed towards the successful conduct of this conference. In the end, I once again on behalf of the organizing committee thank you all for joining us here with this conference. And thank you very much and I hope to see you again in another event. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to